I'm Dr. Susan and welcome to this exciting Facebook Live event. Thank you for joining us. We're talking about how to improve our sexual function, so who doesn't want to know about that? And I'm here with my friend Sarah Bryce, who is the Vice President of Marketing for Cleavana. This is this amazing machine that you see here, and we're going to be talking a little bit about that later. Uh, this is one of the new ways that we have to improve female sexual function. So for years, uh, medical science has focused on men's sexual function. Bazillions of dollars have been invested in that, and women have been kind of left behind. But thank goodness now we're starting to uh, move women into the future and catch up with uh, products like this, which is amazing. So uh, Sarah is a nurse, I'll just tell you that. She's also uh, been a patient, and I have too. We've both had this procedure done, and we'll share a little bit about our personal experiences with that later. But uh, first of all, I want to make sure that we're all on the same ground footing by talking about clitoral anatomy. So isn't it amazing that we don't know about clitoral anatomy? By we, I mean women. Women. And doctors. I know. Yeah. A lot of physicians don't realize the entire anatomy and structure of the clitoris, which is really mind-blowing. It really is mind-blowing. And so I can tell you, um, as a medical student, just like yesterday, but it was a long time ago. <laughs> we were not taught anything about clitoral anatomy. It wasn't, it's still not even in anatomy textbooks. Can you believe it? And there's like lots of pages of anatomy of the penis because guess who wrote the books? But that's starting to change now so mm -hmm. that that's being um, changed. There are a lot of women working towards helping that to change. But uh, you know, the fact is that most women and most doctors cannot adequately describe the clitoris, and, no. and there's different ways to pronounce it, by the way, because Sarah says clitoris, and right. that's right. Both of those are fine, so yep. whichever one you like. Yep. Um, so, when you were growing up and uh, during your education, you know, medical training too. You know, she's a nurse, I'm a doctor. Did Did you learn anything nothing about the clitoris? About it. Nothing. I mean, there was nothing about it, and I was even. Um, I started out in labor and delivery. I did labor mm -hmm. and delivery in terms of nursing, and. Um, there was nothing about it in there. I mean, we didn't learn a single thing. I didn't realize until I started working with Cleavana that the clitoris has 8,000 nerve endings Isn't compared to 1,000 in the penis, which is, wow. Yeah. So we have this extra special talent as women that we're born with, you know, that uh, we can have multiple orgasms and we can do all kinds of amazing things that men can't do, but we cannot do that unless we adequately understand the anatomy. So most of us think of it as what? Just the, the tiny little, little ball that, that you, you see can there. see. Yep. Right. And here's a scary thing. I'll be very honest. I'm a gynecologist. I've um, been a gynecologist for over 21 years. I didn't know either. <laughs> so let me just tell you that. And I was a really good gynecologist. I still am, you know, won all kinds of awards and whatever. I could not tell you the anatomy of the clip. Taurus, I like the way she says it, clitoris. <laughs> you can go with either. I didn't know, and I bet you a lot of money that if you asked 100 doctors to describe the clitoral anatomy, they would not be able to do it. 99 would not, maybe 99 and a half. So you're gonna be so educated today, and you're gonna know your own body better, and, and teach it to other women. We need to teach this to other women. So this is our mission, to teach yes. women about their own anatomy, because if we don't understand our own anatomy, how on earth can we possibly teach our partners how to give us pleasure? This organ is designed with one purpose only, right? right? Which is pleasure, right? It's the only organ in the entire body, men or women, that has one function, which is solely pleasure. That's right. The penis is got other stuff it does. It gets people pregnant, yep. you know. <laughs> yep. The clitoris just is there for, for pleasure. pleasure. And so if we're not maximizing that, I mean, what a waste. So, you know, I'm all about um, living in your full aliveness. So my book, Sexually Woke, that's coming out in a couple of weeks, I'm super excited about that. The whole thing that I'm doing at Complete Midlife Wellness Center, it's all about learning to live in our full aliveness. And if we don't know about our clitoris, we're missing something. So let's let's get into that just for a second and sure. talk about the anatomy. And then we'll talk about how um, Cleavana is an amazing, um, device that has really um, revolutionized the way that we think about this area and, and ways to help to 
maximize our sexual function, taking into account the full anatomy, not just that little tiny bit that we can see, because there's a whole lot more below the surface. Exactly. So I think we have a cool diagram that hopefully can pop up that you can see. And then I, I like to do hand signals. If you come and see me as a patient, I do a lot of like hand models. But okay, so you know, here's the labia, right? And the visible part is that little button right here, right? So we can, we all, most of us know where the visible part, which is called the glands of the clitoris is. And most of us, including most doctors and most partners, think that's the only thing that there is. Uh, but just like the uh, penis has a tip, the, the part that you can see is just the tip. The equivalent of the shaft of the penis is runs upward, but upward meaning like towards your belly button underneath the clitoral hood. And so this is an interesting thing. When I've talked to women, a lot of women, including me, when I was younger, I remember doing things like the yoga pose, like the cobra pose where you're on your, laying on your tummy and it mm -hmm. puts a lot of pressure on your pubic bone. You can get sexually aroused from that. And that's because you're, you're stimulating that shaft or yeah. it's called the body of the uh, clitoris, but that runs, uh, you know, it's much bigger than what you can see. And you can actually feel it between your fingers. So I always tell my patients to start with just checking yourself out. Sure. Um, and a lot of people do not do that. I mean, it's always been, like we were saying, it's always been taboo for women to talk about it. And even, you know, if you hear of, even, I have three boys. We laugh when we would see them kind of playing with their penises when they're, you know, two years old. Their hands just automatically go but there. But that's normal for but boys. But that's normal. Right. But if a woman or a girl was to do that. You're like, stop. You're that's like, not, don't. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? That's right? not, that's right. So and we've got to. Educate. Yeah. And just sort of reframe that so that I, I recommend all women, uh, no matter what your age is. You know, if you've just figured this out and you're 50-something. Yep. Get a mirror. Go look feel what's down there, um, play with what feels good for you when you're by yourself so that you can, you might, maybe you're single, you can enjoy that by yourself more, that's fantastic. Or you can translate that to your partner because if we don't know about it, think how much our men know. Yeah, they're, and we don't want to rely on that, right? right. We don't want to say, I mean, if we don't know what feels good to us, we're never going to know or be able to explain to our partner right. what feels good. Right. And we don't want to have to rely on someone to figure that out for us. And what an awful position to be in. I mean, I feel sorry for men, really. Uh, bless your hearts. You guys are not taught anything. Um, in sex class, sex is penis goes in vagina. That's it. Um, and we're not taught any, you know, we're not taught anything about the anatomy and men are taught less than nothing. So our, our goal is to teach you about it and so you can pass that on to your partners. So. Um, Maybe that diagram is showing, but here I'm digressing because I get super excited about this. So here is the labia. Here's that little bit of the clitoris. We've talked about the body. And then there's this other amazing part of the clitoris, which is called the legs or the cruce, which you can see in the diagram come down laterally. Uh, that means to the side of the labia and deep underneath the tissue. So this isn't um, an area that you can see. Uh, but it's, a, it's another way that women can get intense pleasure is by stimulating that outside of the labia because you're getting into that uh, cruce or the legs of the clitoris. So the um, visible part of the clitoris that most people think is all that exists uh, represents less than one-fifth of the total uh, clitoral anatomy. So most of us are ignoring four-fifths yeah. <laughs> of our uh, most intense source of pleasure. So imagine if you could have five-fifths, well, right. all of it And working, I always think about right? it, it looks really like a wishbone. It does, yeah. And if you, mm -hmm. if you looked at the size of it, it really is, if you had straightened it out, it would be about the size of a penis. Mm -hmm. And so it's just kind of curved into this wishbone-like shape. And it makes sense if we, if men were only getting pleasure through the tiny tip, tip of the right. penis, mm -hmm. um, yeah, there would be something there, but it wouldn't be to the extreme that it is all the time. That's so right. with mm -hmm. us, knowing what's involved and um, knowing your own anatomy, what feels good, that's going to, just that alone is going to take your sex level to the next level. That's right. And there's also something about just that communication um, that I've personally experienced. Like Once you can communicate what feels good, 
it just opens up a whole degree of possibilities for communication in your relationship because this is cool stuff to talk about and it can really be an elephant in the room yep. but once you've crossed that barrier it can just say hey let's go down there together and look at the anatomy and this is where it feels good and and um, you know always uh, present it in a positive way I like it when you do such and such or, or I like it when you touch such and such that is so helpful and so uh, we're in the business of helping your sex life to either come back or be better than ever. Um, a lot of us, as we get older and we've had kids, um, that can wane. Yeah. You know, we get busy, right? We and get busy, and sex doesn't have to end just because you're a certain age. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, it really should only get better, and I think that I've heard mm -hmm. you say that. Absolutely. Um, and I heard this the other day when, you know, if you're comparing, like, a woman's um, ability to climax an orgasm to a man's with a woman it's almost like a cockpit you've got all of these buttons I mean it yeah. really is like looking in a cockpit mm -hmm. and all of these certain things have to really be touched and hit before we get to take off that's right and with a man it's like the big like just easy button it's just like one button <laughs> I love that. and isn't that great <laughs> It is. And it is an easy button. We don't. We don't have an easy. We button. don't have an easy button. But you know what? A lot of people think we have an easy button. <laughs> they do. And, a and lot they're of over there playing like DJ with the easy button. It doesn't work that way. It really doesn't. And frankly, it can be kind of annoying. It's like it's very ouch. annoying. Stop. Yeah, we're done. Uh, right. So uh, if you've been in that boat, you're not alone. Because uh, you know, in the study that I did uh, over the past couple of years, only seven percent of women over forty felt that their sex life was. Um, good. 93% <laughs> wanted it to be better. So if you're feeling like you want it to be better, guess what? So is almost everybody else. And this is an amazing way to do it. So let me talk a little bit about this cool thing that I'm so excited to have. So when I first met Sarah, um, we were discussing um, our both of our common interests in improving sexual function for women. And she said, well, we've got this amazing thing. And I have a um, policy or a promise that I make to my patients is that I would never offer anything to my patients that I haven't tried myself because I'll tell you the truth there are a lot of things out there that are let's just say snake oil they don't work and so I'm not going to sell anything to anybody that I haven't tried so Sarah kindly offered to have a physician friend of hers do this for me so I can tell you about my personal experience um, and uh, I think and you've had it done too. I have. Yeah. I had, and just like you, I well, before I work for a company, I want to know that something works. I can't sell mm -hmm. something that I'm not really passionate about. And right. So, um, and I had had a hysterectomy. Mm -hmm. I'm 40, but I had a hysterectomy when I was 39, mm -hmm. and um, a complete hysterectomy, which mm -hmm. definitely affected my sex drive and libido. Yeah. I mean, you go through menopause overnight. When overnight. You have surgical menopause. It's rough. I mean, the dryness, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. the lack of libido, mm -hmm. everything. So I was. Ex extremely excited to try it and um, it was yeah it was great my husband's mm -hmm. very excited yeah that I had it done yeah I mean it's a family issue when our sex life drops when our sex drive drops and that can happen uh, for many many reasons but certainly menopause um, you know when Sarah's really young we can have surgical menopause or, or natural menopause one of the primary things that happens is that blood flow to the clitoris decreases uh, so any procedure that can bring blood flow back to the clitoris is good. <laughs> so, you know, men have Viagra. You take a pill, it's a vasodilator, blood vessel dilator, blood goes down there and they're good to go. We're a little bit more complicated than that. Uh, so we need a little bit more help. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to walk through what this procedure is like. And um, so uh, this amazing thing uses uh, sound wave technology. Um, as a source of energy and you know there's a lots of sources of energy out there um, sound wave technology is one of them um, and so when I demonstrate this for you it's going to be loud so I'll tell you when that's going to happen uh, when you have this procedure done it takes about 10 minutes uh, so we recommend having it done twice a week two weeks in a row so four treatments for example I tell patients a, a nice way to do it is say Monday and Thursday and Monday and Thursday or something like that so four treatments 10 minutes, you can do it at lunchtime or before work. It's not painful. Like I said, I, we've both had it done. Yeah. You can walk out of the office and go to the gym or go back to work. So there's uh, literally no downtime. There's no cutting, no needles, no anesthesia. It's, it's super, super easy. Honestly, it's so easy that I thought this is too good to be true. I, I had it done and was like, hmm, 
that can't be, yep. but um, it really is. So um, I think the best way to show you how this works is just to demonstrate it. Now I'm gonna just demonstrate it on my arm, but um, this would be actually happening right over the clitoris. So when you come in to see me at Complete Midlife Wellness Center or your local uh, provider who offers Cleovana, you, you would be in the position the, with your feet in the stirrups, just like if you're having your regular exam. No local anesthetic or anything like that. We would sort of talk you through what we're going to do so that you're very comfortable. And uh, we found that patients actually kind of enjoy it. Yeah. Because when I show it to you, you'll see why it actually can be pretty pleasurable. So um, there's three parts to this, and I'm, this is where I put my reading glasses on because <laughs> I just have to do that. Um, Number one is our little suction cup. So, um, you know, suction obviously is gonna draw blood into the clitoral area, and that's what we want to do. We want that area to be really engorged with blood. So when I turn this on, you'll see I'm gonna put it over my arm, and you can imagine this being put over the visible part of the clitoris. And this is much larger than that, of course, so this is also incorporating the body of the clitoris as well. So we're bringing blood into that whole area. And let me just show you what this is like. Um, just a little couple of buttons. Now, this is some sound, but I don't know if we can get the camera in and see this is actually a gentle suction. You might be able to see how that's sucking my skin into the little cup. This feels very pleasant. It's not painful, so we just chit chat or you can listen to music while we're doing it. That goes on for two minutes. Now, um, that was just a little uh, test. So this cup belongs to you. So we put your name on it, um, keep it. When you come back, this is yours. You can take it home or we keep it. Uh, but everybody has their own, so we, everything's nice and um, clean, obviously. Um, now, I can do that for longer than two minutes. Um, per, perhaps if you're postmenopausal and, and I'm looking after the two minutes and it's, we, I'm still not seeing significant blood engorgement, we can do it for longer. But you know, two minutes is uh, typical. Then we go to part two. Now this, this is the, where the sound wave technology really kicks in, so it sounds loud. It's a little bit like a, a jackhammer, but in a pleasant way. <laughs> it's a, a pretty uh, intense vibration. I'm just gonna reach over and we'll uh, show you what that feels like. So don't let this scare you. It does look a bit scary, but it's, it's only external. It's on the outside, right? So this is gonna go, let me, before I turn it on, explain. Remember? Okay, here's my diagram. So <laughs> I'll do it this way. <laughs> the clitoris is complicated, so you might have to use your imagination. This is gonna go over the visible part of the clitoris, and then it's also gonna run down those sides. Because remember, we were talking about that really important area, those legs, or crus, C-R-U-S, you know, we talk in Latin when we do anatomy. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's really addressing that whole area, as well as the visible part of the clitoris, and you know, that's also that body at the top. So let me show you what this sounds like, and I won't talk while I'm doing it because it's loud. So this is, this is gonna be moving. Um, actually feels good on my arm. We're going down the sides, in the middle, down the sides. Let me turn you off. Okay, <laughs> so um, there's a certain number of pulses that uh, is typical to use with that part of the procedure, but again, we can customize it for you. Some patients, if you're feeling like it's fine, we can do a little bit longer. Um, if you're feeling like you've had enough because it's getting a little bit sensitive, then we'd stop there. And remember, we're getting four treatments in a row, so the first one by itself is not, you know, we're not done yet. Um, so the third part, this is the part that most people think is really fun, and you will see why in a minute. Um, this goes, just stays right over the uh, glands of the clitoris, and obviously the size of the head is also gonna cover the body of the clitoris. So let me do that again because it didn't want me to stop. Here we go, okay. Now, can you see this? Look what it's doing to my arm. So you can imagine what that feels like over the clitoris. It's, a, it's not unpleasant, let me just say. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, again, this has a set number of pulses that most patients can tolerate and feel comfortable with. 
uh, but in certain patients we may do it twice, so we'll see how you're feeling. Uh, but again, the whole thing, 10 minutes. So I, when I had mine done, I found that quite pleasant, and we have a little joke that sometimes we'll just tell patients to hold it themselves and we'll leave the room. Because <laughs> <laughs> it does feel good. So what's actually going on, so, I, so this is all fun and games, but what's actually going on at a cellular le level when we're doing this? Sure, so basically, you know, the cupping is really gonna bring the blood flow in, and that's gonna really prep the area for what we're doing with the sound waves. The cupping is this, yeah, it's cupping. Which is, yeah, yeah. the pulsated suction. Mm -hmm. Um, and what's great is that we're really creating um, angiogenesis and neurogenesis with, with new blood vessels and new nerves. So we're creating new blood vessels. As we age, we have lack of blood flow. The blood flow is gonna sort of slow down. For sure. Um, mm -hmm. And that's one of the number one things that we see with aging um, in women's you know, vaginal health. And so with this, you're really bringing that blood flow back in. You're creating new nerves, which is gonna increase the sensitivity. And um, I would say most of the patients, in our clinical study, over 100% of patients reported um, improvement after the, four, the series of four treatments. And um, you know, it, it really brings sex back to what it was when they were in their 20s and 30s. Yeah, when you have that really good blood flow, which is amazing. It's um, amazing. So when we talk about angiogenesis, which is bringing in new blood vessels and, and neurogenesis or uh, bringing, uh, increasing the size and the quantity of the nerve fibers, um, we're not making you into something that wasn't there before, but simply re the goal is to restore normal anatomy of someone who's a little bit younger. So uh, it's really an incredible thing. So when there's a lot of different uh, procedures in different parts of the body that use the same kind of uh, technology. So it's not something new or different, it's just a different application. So causing uh, intentional microscopic tissue damage with whatever energy source that we're using, in this case it's the sound waves, mm -hmm your body brings in all of those little healing guys that are, their job is to heal this, what they consider to be microscopic tissue damage, and they do that by bringing in new blood vessels, and improve, uh, in doing so, that improves the, the blood flow to the nerves. So this doesn't happen overnight, which is why we do the four treatments. Right. Um, what, what do you see with the timeline as far as when people start to feel better? Because it takes time for new blood vessels to form. It does, yeah. it takes time. and. People will initially notice a change, obviously, because we're doing the treatment and we're engorging the blood and so mm -hmm. forth. But it really does take a full 12 weeks for people to see mm -hmm. the peak of the results. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then after that, we recommend doing an annual maintenance. And it might be um, you know, every 12 months, it might be 18 months, just depending on the patient themselves. Um, but they'll come in for just two of the treatments. Yeah, which is really cool. So when you've, you know, so, this doesn't last forever, but you know what? Nothing does. Everything's impermanent. And um, we're always aging. <laughs> that's right. So it is something that we need to repeat, just like all of the other uh, treatments that we do. Uh, but the amazing thing is that you know, once we've set this up, there are things that you can do to help improve the lo longevity of the procedure and to help give you the best results long term. And we were just talking before this started about a yeah. cool new product that your company's coming out with. I don't yes. think it even has a name yet, but no, I can't wait to try it. Yes, no, we're developing it right now. Um, and it's really amazing. So it's a topical product that you're gonna use as basically like a lubricant for intercourse mm -hmm. um, or with masturbation. And um, it's a vasodilator, so it's got some DHEA, it's got all kinds of really good stuff in it um, that dilates immediately yeah. dilates, it helps with lubrication, it helps with sensitivity, it helps oxygenate the, the um, and, and even overall, like just if you used it on a daily basis, it could even help with tightening and, it's just got some really amazing things in it. You know, every morning we wake up as women and we put on all of our skin stuff, right? Yeah. But we don't really take yeah. care of our vagina and our we vulva, don't. and we mm -hmm. have to do that. I mean, it's something that if you don't do as a preventative when you're in your 30s, 20s even, um, 40s, then you're gonna see those repercussions later. Mm -hmm. And if you start doing that stuff now, then you're gonna have a healthy, beautiful, well-functioning vulva when you're in your 70s and 80s. And yeah. it it makes a lot of difference when it comes to relationships and, and really does. overall health. Yeah, it, it really is a kind of a use it or lose it type of a situation, which doesn't mean that you have to have vaginal intercourse by any means, uh, but just to continue stimulation of the clitoral area, whether you're alone, whether you like oral sex or go, 
you know, just somehow continuing the stimulation is going to keep those blood vessels open, keep them flowing, doing something like this periodically to give it a real boost, and then using some uh, other products to help those blood, or just have sex. Yeah. as much as possible exactly <laughs> or masturbate a lot there's yep. another product yep. that Sarah and I were talking about uh, there's probably several on the market but um, vibrators that have a suction element this is a really cool new thing uh, so everyone should have a vibrator or two and uh, there's a new line of vibrators that have a suction element one is called VUSH or VUSH I tried it super cool again it's another way that's it, yep. not going to do what this does but it will help with um, maintaining it because we just want to keep that blood flowing down there and then another there's so many cool things there uh, are. but if you're doing this which I highly recommend because I did it and like I said I wouldn't tell you to do anything that I wouldn't do myself uh, some people also consider doing some um, concurrent procedures like uh, you might have heard about the uh, PRP or plasma excuse me platelet rich plasma uh, injections uh, which are come under various brand names, but um, some patients choose to have this done first. So if you were coming into the office and had this done, one of the options that I offer is having the um, O-Shot is the brand that I use, but there's others, the platelet-rich plasma injected into the tissue once it's been wounded. <laughs> you know, so PRP works best on wounded tissue. You know, it was developed to help with orthopedic injuries and wound healing that microscopic tissue damage that, that's set up by this procedure. And that sounds scary, but you may not even feeling it. There's no visible blood or in injury. It's just, you know, microscopic. If you put PRP into tissue that's got some microscopic damage, it's just gonna accelerate that uh, whole process of um, neovascularization, sure. or we use all these big words, angiogenesis, new blood vessels. So, um, well, we have a lot of physicians too, and you know, it, speaking of like just orgasms in general, a lot of people don't realize that there's the clitoris um, orgasm, and then there's the internal or the G spot mm -hmm. orgasm. Yeah, that's right. And so there's two different ways, but I would say 90% of women really orgasm through the clitoris. Really, that's true. And different studies show different numbers, but most, for sure, women uh, and men don't know this, but most women do not prefer vaginal intercourse and are not able to have an orgasm just with vaginal intercourse. So if your routine is simply just stick it in and that's it, and, and you're not able to have an orgasm, that is because we're not addressing any of the clitoris really with vaginal intercourse except for the underside of the clitoral body which some women perceive as the g-spot some of us do some of us don't uh, but again that takes a lot of education for our partners to be able to uh, find that area and then also just to accept and embrace that if vaginal intercourse isn't what does it for you that that isn't the only thing that sex is sex is intimate physical contact and it comes in a million different flavors yes so we recommend having a menu and not always just going for that one item yeah. you know there it's a menu like you said it's a, a huge area and um, learning how to play with the whole area is going to increase your opportunities to have a really fun time with sex so um, this is for anybody now I'm menopausal. Uh, Sarah mentioned she's uh, menopausal because of her hysterectomy. You don't have to be menopausal to get this done. We start losing blood flow from the clitoris in our 20s, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, if any, if at any age you're feeling like your orgasmic potential has started to drop, then increasing blood flow could be helpful. So you may be in your 20s, 30s, 40s, or 70s. And uh, we would love to answer any questions that you have. We won't be doing it live today because uh, we're gonna wrap up in just a moment. Uh, but you can reach me at uh, drsusan.com. Um, ask any questions that you have. I welcome emails. Uh, my email is drsusan, drsusan, at drsusan.com. And you can put some comments in the Facebook uh, chat if you'd like to, and we'll do our best to answer those. Uh, but this is great. I love it. And I'm so excited that you're able to join me today. I know, me Thank too. you for being here and for well, being so open. Yes. And I think, you know, if we can be open as women with each other and with our partners, 
uh, we're going to start a whole new generation of women who talk about this like it's it really is it's normal it's a movement yeah. I mean it, it really is. is a movement that started I saw Maria Shriver on the Today Show back in March pre COVID and she was talking about how many women are not satisfied with their sex, sex life, life most. and it really does change your relationships and um, I was talking to a physician the other day that said you know what my goal is really to add life to their years and years to their life and I love it's it. just something that you know there's a lot of health benefits to having a healthy sex life and orgasms that people don't realize and if you I encourage women to you know if this is something that you want to try and maybe it's with your partner um, bring them in like bring mm -hmm. your spouse or partner come into the office together that way you can talk and introduce these new ideas um, there's so many different things that are involved from the mind to the the vulva and yes, absolutely we really have to support each other and take care of it we are complicated we are yes but we've got to break the box yes break the walls of the box get outside the box let's you know start the conversation and I'm so glad that you joined us today uh, reach us reach me at uh, complete midlife wellness center com or dr. Susan com I can put you in touch with Sarah if you have any questions and we look forward to seeing you soon thanks and for your joining new book us. is coming out in Yay, September. And my new book is coming out sexually woke check it out it talks all about this uh, on topic, Amazon so you can buy it right on Amazon you can buy it. thank you order you on can Amazon. yeah I need to make her my, <laughs> my marketing manager <laughs> you can pre-order on Amazon sexually woke uh, check it out uh, we want you to we want you to have what we have because it's great yes all right, we'll see you guys, and thanks for joining us. Have a great day.